This video is sponsored by Morning Brew, the daily newsletter about business and tech. On February 24th, Russia invaded Ukraine, starting a war that, as of the time of recording, still rages on, causing needless suffering to civilians and personnel, all in an attempt to satisfy the ego of wannabe Tsar and Canadian specialty dish Vladimir Putin. In response to this, Western nations, including the UK, EU and US, announced a raft of sanctions designed to collapse the Russian economy. Many of these sanctions focused on Russian exports of oil and natural gas, which are key to the Russian economy. Such as, for example, cancelling the Nord Stream 2 pipeline and the EU announcing that it was phasing out all imports of Russian natural gas. This represents a problem for Europe, however, because natural gas ultimately accounts for 22% of all of the energy used in Europe, and Russia supplies 40% of it. And that energy's got to come from somewhere. But this is also an opportunity. Contrary to what the industry wants you to believe, natural gas is not a clean fuel. It emits approximately 490 tonnes of CO2 for each gigawatt hour of power supplied, making it cleaner than coal, but British footy scran compared to the hawk cuisine of renewables such as wind and solar. As long as natural gas is in the European energy mix, not only are we emitting a lot of CO2 into the atmosphere, we're also partly dependent on Russia, with all of the associated questions that comes with that about energy security. In this video, I'm going to talk about how Europe specifically should, and indeed currently says it will, remove its dependence on natural gas, though all these talking points really apply to any economy wanting to degas its energy mix. Firstly, consider where Europe uses its energy. Approximately 50% of all energy is ultimately used for heating or cooling, 30% for transport, and 20% for electricity. 42% of heating is supplied by natural gas, and 18% of electricity, with transport having a negligible contribution by natural gas. Though it should be noted, all of these statistics are European averages, and vary wildly country by country. So to remove dependence on natural gas, and also reduce carbon emissions, the number one priority is finding an alternative source of energy for heating, with electricity generation actually being a distant second. And it's worth stressing that if the specific goal here is to remove dependence on Russian natural gas, then we don't need to entirely remove gas from the energy mix, we just need to reduce its use by about 40% or so. Anything above that is an ecological bonus. Heating itself can be broken down into heating buildings, heating as part of industry, heating water for domestic use, and other miscellaneous uses of heating. Heating as part of industry, also known as process heating, is pretty varied, but often specialised to that offered by burning natural gas. So let's assume we can't work with that. For now. Heating and cooling buildings, on the other hand, the largest chunk of the pie, is absolutely an area that can reduce its use of natural gas. The easiest way to do this is simply to improve the efficiency of heating a house, meaning improving roof insulation wall insulation, window insulation, you name it. Doing so means that you don't need to use as much energy to heat homes, meaning you don't need to use as much fuel. Simple, proven technology that can be widely rolled out rapidly. Nice. However, you can also change how homes and their water are heated. And this isn't some sci-fi idea, I'm talking about a proven technology that has been rolled out in over 23 million homes in the EU alone. Instead of using a gas boiler, use an electric heat pump. These heat pumps come in a variety of flavours, transferring energy from either air or water or ground, but they all basically work like fridges in reverse, using electricity to keep a volume of air at a certain temperature. This is technology that's been shown to work in a wide range of settings, including even very cold countries, and producing only a fraction of the CO2 emissions of a gas boiler. The downside? They are more expensive than gas boilers. What European governments could do to transition the heating sector away from the use of natural gas is provide financial support to people who want to better insulate their homes or replace their gas boiler with an electric heat pump. That sounds like it would be a very expensive thing to do, but one high-level scheme would beg to differ. 
The Italian Super Bonus Scheme, designed to upgrade the country's largely outdated heating systems, pays a homeowner 110% of the cost of eco-friendly alterations to their house. Yes, you heard me right, 110%. So they cover the cost of the work and then provide a bonus. But here's the amazing thing. While the scheme has been dogged by corruption and the inevitable inflation of the cost of work and had a huge initial outlay, it actually made the Italian government money. Analysis suggests that the scheme increased Italy's GDP by 0.7% and created 153,000 new jobs in low-carbon home construction and renovation. Bello. The EU estimates that three quarters of all the dwellings in it are energy inefficient, meaning this is a colossal opportunity. Ambitious schemes in low carbon heating, like the super bonus, all over Europe could reduce dependence on natural gas, modernize the workforce, and provide a post-COVID economic boost. While there's always the possibility of mismanagement with schemes like this, looking at you, Northern Ireland, this could very well be a triple win. More than that, actually, because improving the efficiency of heating homes reduces the running costs, protecting people on low incomes. And it means they don't have to make the horrible choice between eating and staying warm, a choice that people are already having to make in some third world countries, like the United Kingdom. Altogether, that this seems like a no-brainer. Power generation is the other area where progress can be made. Europe gets about 18% of its electricity from natural gas right now, a proportion that could absolutely be replaced by simply building further renewable generation, wind and solar in particular. In fact, the ever wonderful and excellently named Dr. Simon Evans estimates that the UK, for example, already has enough wind and solar projects with planning permission, just as yet unbuilt, to make up for the country's electricity shortfall caused by cutting off Russian gas supplies. Accelerating the process of giving permits broadening areas where projects will be considered, for example, onshore wind here in the UK, and providing tax breaks or other financial incentives to new renewable developments would allow natural gas to be phased out of our electricity mix within a handful of years. Again, note though that I'm not proposing to completely remove gas from the energy mix yet. At the moment, it still fulfills a useful role as a backup to variable renewable generation and provides inertia to the system. The objective here is just to remove at least 40% of the gas generation, that which uses Russian gas. Compared to reforming how Europeans heat their homes, this is actually pretty easy to do. You're just modifying existing legislation and potentially chucking in a financial incentive, all absolutely within the Overton window. We should be demanding this of our politicians. Oh, and before anyone says it in the comments, by the way, no, nuclear isn't really an option here. It's just too slow. New nuclear takes about 10 years between planning, construction, and commissioning. Construction alone takes 84 months on average. A new wind project takes less than 12 months to build and is a lot easier to get permission for. For the task at hand, nuclear is just not the appropriate tool. This war is a tragedy, and it forces a lot of hard choices to be made, just one of which is this energy conundrum. If we don't get it from Russia, where do we get it from? Pivoting the European energy market, and especially the heating market, away from natural gas towards renewables represents a real opportunity for something positive to come out of this situation. Doing so will require upfront investment and a lot of ambition, but achieves multiple objectives. Reduce greenhouse gas emissions, in line with the EU's stated objective of bringing emissions down to 55% of 1990 levels by the year 2030. Improve air quality by not burning natural gas. Modernize the European workforce and increase energy security, bringing increased control of energy production into European borders, reducing price instability, reducing costs to consumers. This is a horrible situation, but an opportunity. Alongside demanding that our governments help alleviate the humanitarian crisis, let's also demand that they increase support for low carbon heating in homes and increase support for new renewable electricity generation. Doing so helps the environment, sure, but it also helps the workforce and it acts as a further sanction on the Russian war economy. The use of new technology is going to be a key factor in successfully degassing the European energy mix, though keeping up to date with all the developments in tech is 
pretty difficult. Getting a daily digest of the latest news in tech and business and finance and policy for free would be ideal. Wait, sorry. It is. It's free. This is where Morning Brew comes in, the free daily newsletter delivering to your inbox the latest news in tech, business, investments, policy, you name it. Reading a Morning Brew is a great way to start the day, because instead of just aimlessly scrolling through social media in bed, you actively brief yourself on what the world is doing right now. For example, you might learn about China's position on the Ukraine conflict, or about a new startup that recycles electric vehicle batteries. It's a witty, rapid-fire roundup of everything you need to know to meet the day. If you're a person who wants to know more about the world, there is literally no reason to not sign up. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. Click the link in the description to sign up for Morning Brew and make your mornings that bit smarter. With thanks to Morning Brew for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you'd like to learn more about this topic in the process of editing this video, the IEA actually published an article that was 10 steps that Europe can take to reduce its dependence on natural gas. I'll leave that linked in the description, which goes into a little bit more detail than this video. I'm donating half of the sponsor fee for this video to the Disaster Emergency Committee, who are providing support to refugees in Ukraine. I'll leave a link in the description if you would also like to support their work. I really hope that you took something positive away from this video. You now know what to demand of your politicians. If you did, please do pop it a like and share it with people you think may also find it interesting. If you want some recommended viewing next, here's some stuff from me on YouTube. And that just leaves me to say thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.